Okay, so we're getting ready to leave. I love you and guys. here we are. Be careful, God bless you. We tried to go earlier this morning, but it was super hot and the line was super long. Bridget Borges is used to waiting hours at the San Ysidro border crossing. It is. But for her children, this. it's torture. <laughs> The family lives part-time in North San Diego County. Okay. When their father was deported to Mexico 12 That's years okay. ago, Bridget considered moving everyone to Tijuana. But her oldest son, Aaron, has autism. Bridget felt she had to keep him in a U.S. school. I said he doesn't speak Spanish. Um, he has uh, difficulty in, in uh, learning, and he won't be able to make it out there. Aaron says he wishes his father could live in the U.S. I miss him so much. And it makes me so sad. Bridget recently applied for the Century Trusted Traveler program, which would let her cross the border in a fraction of the time. But U.S. Customs and Border Protection told her she didn't qualify because she was married to a deported man, making her high risk. I got emotional there. I did start to cry. And I said, look, if it's an issue where you think I'm going to try to cross him through Century, it's not going to happen. I go, I know the risk. I'm not stupid. She says she wouldn't risk jail time because her children depend on her. U.S. Customs and Border Protection declined to comment for this story. Immigration lawyer Nicole Ramos says the agency regularly denies sentry to people with deported spouses. So essentially you have the U.S. government punishing these families twice. Ramos says there's no policy prohibiting spouses of deportees from getting sentry, but that they're regularly denied it because of concerns they'll try to smuggle their husbands across the border. She says these are the people who could most benefit from sentry because of their cross-border lives. I know women that have developed back problems while sitting in the line, women that have developed anxiety problems from sitting in the line. It's exactly 6.01 right now. Alicia Lopez is one of those women. She passes the hours by flipping through radio station after radio station. I had a breakdown. I just had an anxiety attack. And to shake that off at work, it took a few hours. It just, it did linger. She works every weekday in the U.S. at the San Ysidro Health Center. Lopez is the primary breadwinner in her family. She gets up at 5 a.m. to get to work at 9. In the evenings, she returns to her children and their Mexican father in Tijuana. She says she's often afraid of losing her job because she's never sure she's going to make it to work on time. Come on, let's go. Lopez also applied for the Century Trusted Traveler program. The border agent told her she would never qualify because she was married to a deported man at the time. Thank you. I have no criminal record. I have no, uh, nothing on my driving record. I have nothing, I mean, a good employment history, everything. Here's Puppy's house. On a recent Monday, Puppy. Bridget Borges and her children were reunited with her husband in Tijuana. ¿Cómo les fue? Yeah. Bien. Bien. Not too bad this time. Oh, okay. They quickly absorbed themselves in family routine. All right. Eduardo fed the baby, No. while Bridget made copies for a class she was teaching that evening at a nearby church. Six copies to make. It's cuando ella está, me siento bien. When she's here, I feel good. I feel a family. The house feels different. I have my kids. Los niños, los tengo. The couple showed me photos of their complicated history. So this is 99. Months after their wedding, Eduardo was deported for a drug offense he'd committed decades before, as a young man. He had since become a pastor. It was a challenge, and at the same time, I was sure it was a challenge I had to overcome. If I really believed in God, I was going to be able to succeed. Otherwise, my faith was not real faith. Okay, baby, come on in. The family goes to Eduardo's church in Tijuana every time they're together. Bridget thinks if it weren't for their faith and Eduardo's preaching, they wouldn't have been able to make their cross-border lives work. When they feel despair, they turn to the Bible. And Bridget tries to pass on those lessons to her kids and to children at the church, where she teaches classes. If God wasn't that center in our lives, things just would collapse. It would. Eduardo says the hardest part is not being able to play an active role in his children's lives in the U.S. Nunca pude, no he tenido hasta hoy el... I've never had the happiness of taking my son to school. All of that. I missed it. Yeah, he missed all of that. Bridget plans to reapply for Century in case the next border agent sympathizes. Jean Guerrero, KPBS News.